So I'm going to add another class in my models and I'll call this one candy repository. And of course this one will implement the interface I candy repository. So let's bring in the methods that it needs to implement or the properties and one method. And let's get the all candy property taken care of first. And just like we did for the categories here, we will simply create dummy data for the candy. So here, instead of throwing exception, we will create a new list of candy. And we can start adding few candy here. So let's start with a new candy and add the properties for it. So the first one is of course the candy ID. So this one can be one. Then we have the candy name. And this one can be assorted hard candy. Then we have the price. And let's say this one is 495 and it's a decimal so I'll add M to it so it keeps the decimal places. Then we have the description for the candy. And here I will simply paste lorem ipsum. So just some random text instead of an actual description. And next we want to add a category. Because each candy belongs to a category. We want to return all candy as well as category for each of them. So in order to do that, we actually need to bring in our category repository that we created here and inject it into our class for the candy. So up here on the class level, I will create an iCategory repository variable and it's going to be a private and it's read only because it will simply read the iCategory repository and I'll name it category repository but with an underscore because it's a private variable and that's a standard way to name private variables starting with underscore. And we can instantiate it right here and it's gonna be a new category repository. So this will give us access to this get all categories property. So now over here in our properties for the candy we can add the category for this particular candy. So our category, as you can see, we have it in our IntelliSense already available. And we will simply call the get all categories method. So we'll go to our underscore category repository. And you can see we have our get all categories method available. And we want it as a list, so I'll convert it to list. Because we don't want all categories, we just want one category for this particular candy. So this one can be the hard candy. So that's the index of zero from the list. If you look at it, hard candy is the first category in that list. Next property we need is the image URL. And I just got one from Google. So I'm getting a hard candy JPEG from Wikipedia. Next one is whether it is in stock. And let's just say it is true, it is in stock. Then we have a property whether this is candy on sale. So it's the is on sale. And let's just say this one isn't, so it's false. We have the image URL, but remember we also have the image thumbnail URL. And this is just a thumbnail of the same image from the Wikipedia. You can see the address is actually the same, but it adds the thumbnail size to it. And that's really all we need for this one candy. So I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna add another candy. And I'm just gonna make the changes. It's gonna be the same way like I did before, just different text and different price and stuff like that. So here is my second candy. This is assorted chocolate candy for $5.95. I have a random lorem ipsum for the description. And once again, we are creating the category from get all categories, but this time we are calling the index one from the list. So that is when you look at it, our chocolate candy. And once again, I got the image from the Wikipedia as well as the thumbnail, which is again from the Wikipedia, it's the same image, just smaller. And I'm keeping Instag as true and it's on sale as false. And I'm gonna add one more candy. 
So this is my third candy with ID3, it's assorted fruit candy for 395 again just some random text, and we are getting it for the category of fruit candy which is index 2 in our category repository right here. I got an image from Wikipedia as well as the thumbnail, and this time I'm going to set is on sale to true. So this is our method or a property for get all candy. Next we could implement the get candy on sale, but we don't really need to do this. This is just to test if everything is working. Again, we are just using dummy data. So I'll leave this one not implemented and I will simply implement the get candy by ID. And that one is very simple. This one will simply return first all candy and then we will filter it down just for the one candy that matches the candy ID here. So we will first get all candy, but we will only get the first one that matches the ID. And here we will filter it down to the candy that matches this ID. So we will do a lambda. So C for candy goes to C dot candy ID property. And we'll compare it to the candy ID argument that is passed into this method. So if our property candy ID matches, that's the candy that we will return as soon as we find it. And if we don't find any, then null is returned. So this is our implementation of candy repository and we have our category repository already done. And like I said, we don't need the get candy on sale because frankly, it would be just another dummy list just like we created so far. So what do we do next? Well, like I mentioned before, we need to register the interfaces with the respective repositories as a service so that we can use it and inject it anywhere in the application. And that is done in the startup class. So let's do that next. 